to plant kiwi at home, we can extract the seeds individually one by one. But since that takes a lot of time, I'll show you two other methods I use at home with good results. These techniques work well with kiwis that are fresh. However, if you have one that has started to spoil and you won't consume it, we can use it directly for planting because what we are interested in is having all these seeds active so they start to germinate. And we're going to use two methods here. First, I'm going to cut some small slices. What's crucial when planting this type of fruit is that any remaining pulp or juice left during planting will enhance the growth of fungi in the substrate. Generally, most of the seeds are in the middle of the kiwi. That's why I'm going to cut just one slice and plant it directly in the substrate. But on the other hand, this kiwi I have here I'm going to put it in a bowl and remove all the outer part to keep only the seeds from the inside. And I'm going to cut this into small pieces, just the same. Even if you have a kiwi that's completely overripe, we'll remove all the pulp and put it here as well. Now we're going to add water. At this point, this is the moment to use it for strawberries, blueberries, frozen raspberries, and we're only going to do short pulses to try to break up all the pulp with the short pulses. I'm going to cut this into small pieces. Even in cases where you have a kiwi that's completely overripe, we'll remove all the pulp and put it here as well. Now we're going to add water. At this stage, this is the moment to use it for strawberries, blueberries, frozen raspberries, and we're only going to do short pulses to try to break up all the pulp with the short pulses. These are all the small kiwi seeds. At this point, we add a little more water for an extra rinse. You can also use this water to water any plant in your garden because it has a lot of sugars. This process will promote the growth of microorganisms in the soil and enhance it even more. Just like this, we can plant them directly. And if not, we can place them on a plate to let them dry completely and carefully separate them to facilitate the planting process. As for the substrate, we can use well-matured compost. Additionally, we can use black soil. In this case, I have a substrate I prepared with the same compost I just showed you sifted and I added some extra fine perlite, almost like a powder, to help the roots penetrate the substrate once they germinate. In any case, we are going to carry out both types of planting with the two substrates. We will fill this container approximately halfway, since once the plants begin to germinate, they can reach a considerable size and need enough space to grow. Once this is done, we will repeat the same process with this compost, also filling it halfway to ensure the same growth conditions for both groups of plants. If we have very thick remains, we will remove them. You'll see that once they dry, it's much easier to extract the seeds. And the first planting we will do is with a slice. In my experience, I don't really like planting from fruit slices because it tends to bring a lot of fungal growth initially, but we will try it and water it well. Notice how the water soaks in immediately. This is a good sign and we are gonna cover it. We will label it as the kiwi slice. I already have all the seeds that once dried. It's much easier to plant them, and we are going to sow them in this substrate with perlite and directly in this other one, which is compost. First, I'm going to water it lightly so the seeds stick better when I plant them. Since the seeds are very tiny, the planting will be quite shallow, as if we bury them too deep, they might not sprout. In the case of kiwi, we'll try to plant several seeds to get a few plants because kiwis have both a female and a male plant. That's why we need both types of plants. Otherwise, the kiwis won't get pollinated and develop as the female plant will bear the fruit and the pollen will come from the male plant. We water. At this point, this is the compost and perlite method and again, a good watering. If there's any substrate left on the walls, this is the moment to remove it. And this will be the kiwi with just compost. 
From here, we leave it in a well-lit place, for example, behind a window that gets indirect light inside the house, and that will be more than enough until we start seeing all the germination at temperatures between 18 and 22 degrees. It's important that they don't get direct sunlight, because this is very likely to raise the temperature since it's closed and end up killing all the plants. The humidity will be maintained until the seeds start to germinate. If you notice that one day before they germinate the substrate is dry, give it a light watering again. But this is unlikely to happen because with the container being closed, it will retain and create a good humidity chamber at the top. This will greatly enhance the germination and about a month later, these are all the kiwis I grew from seeds that had no pulp. And just like what happened with the strawberries and blueberries, we have a higher germination rate because the seed, being free, can germinate much better. Additionally, this was placed in a substrate that had a bit of perlite to keep it extra aerated. But when we planted directly in compost, we also had good results with the plants. Even though they germinated on the sides, which might have happened because the seeds spread there. Notice that they also germinated very well when we made the seed beds. You'll see that on this side we have larger plants. This is mainly because when we have small spaces, it's the substrate. The more acidic, and at the same time it retains a layer of moisture, the better the plants will develop because we will have many more roots. When we do it, for example, in substrates that are more compact and don't have good air exchange, it prevents the roots from growing well. But in any case, we have many plants that we are now going to transplant. And in this case, I have the two that germinated from the slice, which I buried with a bit of substrate. And since there's a lot of competition with fungi here because they will eat all the kiwi pulp, it can end up killing the seeds. And although we have fewer plants, these two will be much more resistant to fungal attacks than all those that germinated below. But the problem we're going to have is that since we need to have one male and one female plant, it's very likely that we'll end up with two of the same sex. And this won't give us kiwis in the future. The other day, I went to the market and found these yellow kiwis, which I also planted with seeds well cleaned of pulp. And on the other hand, I'll place a slice directly in the substrate because I'm going to see if I can manage to have plants either to grow them directly from seeds or to graft them onto the plants I have in the garden and for transplanting. I'll take out a few more, mainly the larger ones. To give the roots space to grow faster. This way we can have much better developed plants in less time. I will use these small pots which, although tiny, will allow the plants to develop well until the next transplant. For the substrate, I will use one that is well aerated, has a good amount of organic matter, and I added extra compost to nourish the plants. In this case, during the first stage of development, when we have it in a pot, it's beneficial to have a substrate that retains extra moisture because since the pots are very small, this will help prevent the roots from drying out. Additionally, with the extra compost that the plants have, this will help nourish them until we finish transplanting them to a new pot or directly into the garden. It's important when dealing with very small plants. In the container, we should put water. This is important because they have very small roots and we need to keep them hydrated until we place them directly in the new pot. So this is how we do it. And here I always recommend keeping about 5 or 6 plants and if possible up to 10 just to ensure you have both female and male plants. For transplanting I usually add a bit more substrate almost halfway up. In the spot where I'm going to place the plant, I make a small hole and water it beforehand. Here we have the cotyledons, the true leaves. They are now the right size for transplanting and we will barely press them down because if we compact them too much, we will remove the air spaces. This is what we don't want to happen. 
Notice how the water absorbs quickly. This is important because it ensures we have a well aerated substrate. Since they are still very small, we will keep them in a shaded area for at least the first or second week. No direct sunlight until we start to see more true leaves and gradually we can begin to move them to a sunnier spot. Throughout the entire initial growth stage, the leaves grow in this way, more oval shaped. As you can see here, as they develop, the leaves become more rounded like this one here, which is from the male plant and has an impressive shine. The stem is also similar to the skin of a kiwi and has this fine layer of tiny hairs on its underside. This helps make it harder for any pests that try to eat the leaf. For watering, we should do it when the soil feels dry. It's important not to overwater as we don't want constantly wet soil so the plant can develop better. Although the ideal time for planting would be at the end of winter or the beginning of spring, in this case, I did it in January, in the middle of summer, because these plants, while they can withstand the cold once they are fully grown and well developed, I will protect them from the cold throughout this first winter. This way, I reach spring with much more developed plants and their growth accelerates significantly. The plant produces very long branches. The young part of the branch is what twines to help guide it to the area where we have it. Flower production at home starts around mid to early spring, followed by pollination and fertilization, and I will be harvesting throughout the summer and as we approach autumn. And the beginning of winter, the plant starts to lose its leaves, and that's when we'll be harvesting the last kiwis of the season. It will go into winter without leaves until spring begins, and this was the first harvest we did. Sending a big greeting, bye.